Today I've got a fun shop project, a weekend project, in fact, it's pretty quick to build. That's this wall hanging plane till. Now my back wall is where I kind of have all of the hand tools that I want quick access to. And previously my hand planes were on their own individual shelves. It just took up a little bit too much room and I got to make more room for some stupid toys because the vibe I'm going for here is wood shop meets 12 year old's bedroom. Be that as it may, plain till, great fun project. Uh, this one features magnets, which some people aren't totally comfortable with, but in my shop, I'm okay with it. You take a little tug here to pull it back and you can see we've got some small magnets. You'll see all that later on, but it works really, really well, compresses the space down. And if you've got a small shop, you need to really fit as much stuff as you can into small spaces. And I think this really fits the bill nicely. All right, so let's get to it. We'll need stock for the sides, shelves, and top. I'm using scrap cherry, but you can use whatever you have on hand. I get a lot of people asking how in the world I end up with scraps of quality woods like cherry and walnut. Well, it's pretty simple, really. Build a lot with cherry and walnut and you'll magically have lots of cherry and walnut scraps. For the thickness, I went with 5 eighths of an inch. 3 quarters was a little too clunky looking and half inch just didn't seem substantial enough for the amount of weight this has to support, so 5 eighths it is. If you take a look at the SketchUp drawing, you can see the progression of the sides. Dados and rabbits first, and then we'll add the taper angle. The dados and rabbits are cut at the table saw using a dado stack. The fit can be a little bit snug, since we'll have to sand a little bit later. Using my shop made taper maker sled, I can quickly cut the taper angle. Want to build your own? We have hardware and plans available at TWWstore.com. At the drill press, I drill for quarter inch dowels, which will help reinforce our joints. Where the tapered front meets the top, we need to make a cut that matches the angle. Well, we don't have to, but it'll look dumb if we don't. So a beveled rip at the table saw will do the trick. You'll notice throughout this project that I often use off cuts to set my angles. After the first cut, I no longer care what the actual angle is, I just need to match the angle that I've already cut. So now it's time for the glue up. Nothing really eventful here, just glue and clamps. The main panel that holds the planes will rest on cleats, which I'll miter at the bottom and then pre-drill for screws. I could then glue and screw the cleats to the case. Because I want a little extra security when attaching this thing to the wall, I'll also glue on an additional discrete cleat under the shelf. Now the primary way that the till will be attached to the wall is with a French cleat, so I measure the length and cut to fit. I want a snug fit in the till, but I'll cut the wall side of the cleat a little bit short so that I've got some wiggle room when hanging it on the wall. Now I can cut the 45 degree bevel on both pieces. Next up I can continue drilling each dowel hole so that the hole goes through into the adjoining piece. I also decided to add an additional dowel that reinforces the cleat. Nothing wrong with a belt and suspenders. Well, there is, but let's leave poor fashion choices aside for now. For the main panel, I'm using half inch plywood. I cut it to fit into the opening and then bevel the top and bottom so that it matches the angle of the case. Looking good, so now I'll give the frame a nice sanding, easing the edges where needed. The panel is attached with screws alone, since I want the option to remove it in the future. And now we can arrange the planes with the dividers in between. To size the dividers, I'm putting blue tape on each side of each plane, giving them just a little bit of wiggle room. I could then cut the dividers to fit in between. I cut mine oversized and then sneak up on the perfect fit. Since I doubt you have the same exact plane collection as I do, this is an exercise you're going to want to do before you start your build, as you'll need to adjust either the thickness of the dividers or the width of your case. I'm gluing in my dividers, but it's not a bad idea to attach them dry with screws or brads. This way you could rearrange them if you need to. But I'm throwing caution to the wind like a beautiful butterfly spreading his wings for the first flight after emerging from the chrysalis. 
By the way, see that glue that I put on the end grain of the divider? Yeah, that was dumb. That essentially glues the panel to the side wall of the case, negating the whole remove the panel in the future thing. But hey, butterfly don't care. Any finish will work for a project like this. I'm just using rattle can lacquer because it dries really quickly. Now with the panel removed, I can drill for magnets. You can buy magnets in all shapes and sizes, but I find that the cylindrical type gives the best bang for the buck in terms of being low profile, but still strong. I'll start with these little guys because that's what I've got on hand and I'll secure them in place with CA glue. And if I feel the need to have more holding power later, I can always add more magnets. So let's mount this sucker on the wall. As I put the planes in, I could see that some of them aren't quite as secure as I'd like, but this will work for now. A week later, the bigger cylindrical magnets came in, so I was able to add those to the panel. Now that feels a lot better. And this shop project is done. All right, so there it is. Now, uh, hopefully this at least gives you a starting point because uh, you probably don't have the exact same planes that I have, but I showed you how to modify this thing so that you can make it whatever size you need it to be to accommodate whatever planes you have in your collection. And the important thing, I think, even for your own collection is to make sure that this panel can be removed so that you can replace it in the future should you swap out and swap in different tools into your collection. Thank you for watching, everybody, and we'll see you next time.